Hello, Nat. Welcome to the Soul Align Self Care Podcast. Thank you for coming on today. How are you doing? Oh, I'm so good, Tina. I'm I'm glad that we finally are able to connect. Yes, me too. I know it's been a while since I talked to you last, so it's it's really cool to be able to connect. Um, if you could start out by just sharing with the listeners what you do and maybe your journey to how you got there. Yeah, thank you. Um, Hmm. Well, so what comes to mind is like, I do a number of things. Um, mm-hmm. I, like I do web design, my wife and I have a, a bar, ballroom dance studio. Um, Interesting. But, I, I'm, but I'm also, I'm also a coach. Mm-hmm. And um, I think we're, we'll focus mainly on that today. Yes. <laughs> um, I, <laughs> um, I'm a coach that helps people prioritize themselves. Um, yes you know, including more of themselves in their lives. And um, usually people come to me because they realize that the way that they've been living, the way they've been engaging in life, um, they can't continue that way anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, maybe there's too much compromise or sacrifice or, you know, too much of other people, other things ahead of the list and and they're last on the list. And, and they realize mm-hmm. they they want to change, but they... They don't know how, yes, um, where to start, just because they're 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 looking for new ways of being, mm-hmm. yeah. And and a big focus of mine is helping people gain freedom from self sabotage, because I find in my own experience with I'll, which I'll get to in a little bit, but in in my clients, is that what stops them from allowing themselves to include more of themselves to, um, you know, honor their own values, honor their, their feelings is self-sabotage, which is really Mm self-protection, right? That there's some part of us often young that is running the show and thinks that, you know, it needs to behave a certain way to get what it wants, to get what it needs. And if Mm -hmm. it doesn't, then it's unsafe. And that's, mm-hmm. and so I don't know if you felt it, but I feel, I feel it a lot in my body where there's discomfort, there's like visceral tension and contraction and, and I just want to avoid it at all costs. And that's what shows up as procrastination or overthinking and, or even people pleasing, mm-hmm. you know, people pleasing is a big one that I see. Yeah, or like, yeah, not being able to set boundaries or stick to boundaries, yeah. you know, is, is, there's this discomfort that comes up in the body and then this belief that comes with it that, that makes us think, well, if I do this, then I will lose connection with someone. If mm-hmm. I do this, then there will be a loss. Um, if I do this, then people will think I don't care or they'll think I don't love them. And so to try to keep that structure in place, that that kind of... Um, relationship in place based on a way of um, based on a, like a way of living that's no longer congruent with who we are, mm-hmm. but that part of us doesn't know, yeah. right? And so for me personally, um, this has been my life mm-hmm. where um, I didn't, for a lot of my life, I didn't feel safe to be myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe that I needed to people please in order to feel loved. Um, I needed to people please to avoid, um, uh, discontent or disharmony mm-hmm. within a relationship. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things that I experienced growing up was like the silent treatment a lot. And so, you know, like that kind of grips you and, and you don't want to feel, um, absent of love. Yeah. And so, you know, I learned, well, I'll just do whatever I need to do to try to win that person back. Mm-hmm. Right. And that often meant losing myself in that process. Yeah. Um, a lot of my life has also been about avoidance mm-hmm. where I thought, well, uh, you know, the same thing. I don't like confrontation. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like discomfort. So maybe I can avoid it all and find a different way to get to where I wanted to go. But that led to a lot of um, uh, f- scenic ways to get to where I want to get to. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you know, losing, losing my way, um, you know, and, and obviously losing myself. Yeah. And uh, so this has been a, my own journey of honoring myself, owning my power, taking up space, um, being with, being present with myself, you know, because I, I just thought, you know, with all the discomfort I was feeling, I just thought, well, I could just uh, engage in the law of attraction or manifest things to feel safe. And, you know, it, it was primarily externally focused. What can I do on the outside? Mm -hmm. what, what can I change energetically within myself so that I could avoid all discomfort? <laughs> and that, yeah. that, 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 that didn't work for me. And yeah. so, you know, more recently then it's been this process of learning to be with, learning to be with my feelings, learning to be with um, the discomfort that comes up in my body mm -hmm. and, and meeting myself with a lot of curiosity and compassion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, it takes a lot to get to that place before you do that work. I think everybody always starts on the outer side and then uh, realizes that nothing works until you go inward and start to work on yourself inside. Uh, so when you, because you started off um, saying uh, people that they're not prioritizing themselves and they're not living the way they want to live. Uh, most most people feel stuck. They that I run into, they feel stuck. They feel like they don't have some kind of a purpose. They don't feel like they're living their life for, fully. And I I feel like that's a lot of people. Um, do you work with a lot of men or women or both? What do you seem to gravitate towards? I, I work with both, but um, I would say majority are women. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I seem to draw to me a lot of, um, well, women and men who are out of balance with their feminine, if, mm -hmm. if you will, yeah. if, if you know what I mean by that. Yes. Um, you know, they're, they're, in, they're not in a healthy relationship with their masculine, but they're also not in a healthy relationship with their feminine. Yeah. Um, the, the feminine is often, they think of it as weak or like mm -hmm. too woo-woo. Uh, yeah. And they haven't, uh, even the feelings, right? The, the sense of vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I, I, I don't necessarily talk about feminine masculine so um, overtly, but mm -hmm. um, you know, I might talk about it as in terms of structure and flow. Yeah. Um, you know, um, moving into the heart, um, balancing head and heart, things like mm -hmm. that. You know, a yeah. lot of people that I work with tend to spend a lot of their time in their head, mm -hmm. uh, being analytical, trying to be intellectual, rational. Mm -hmm. um, at, and, and I've learned that that's a coping mechanism to avoid feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that there's a lot of people that are out of balance as, as far as the masculine and the feminine. And I feel like men, um, men are more like that because they're kind of programmed that way. And also, um, it doesn't, it's not really, there's not a little, a lot of safe spaces for them to be open to balancing those two. Um, and as you said, it's, you know, when you say, you know, masculine and feminine, most, most men would probably only want to be identified as masculine, but you need both in order to be balanced. You need to be able to receive sometimes and not just always being the doer, you know? And, and when men or uh, women are stuck in their masculine, it's almost, um, they feel they have to be in their masculine all the time. Sometimes they're in a circumstance where um, they're almost uh, forced to be in their masculine uh, in like a survival kind of mode. And then you have women who feel like that's how they have to show up in order to be taken seriously. Um, and also that's a kind of programming also, you know, from, from when we're young. So I feel like it's, it's, uh, I feel like women are more willing to do the work, but I also feel like that might be changing a little bit, which is, uh, really hopeful. Um, so I think maybe that's why you see more women than men, but it's, um, definitely seeing more men doing this type of work, you know? Um, so when you talked about, uh, gaining freedom from self-sabotage, do you find, um, uh, I mean, you mentioned some of the reasons you think people self-sabotage, but do you find that um, it has a lot, it's mostly fear-based or how do you feel about that? What do you usually find? Well, it's, 
it is fear based, but it's mm -hmm. not necessarily a conscious fear base. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's it's um most people, you know, as I mentioned before, most people come at it logically. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, even in terms of like self sabotage and um, productivity, right? They they're looking at productivity hacks. You mm -hmm. know, and and not to say that they don't work like time blocking or, you know, setting a schedule and finding a good plan or things like that. But I know for myself that I've done those things and they they weren't lasting. Mm -hmm. they, um, they weren't sustainable because in, inadvertently I would just come across something new and feel that that discomfort in my body and avoid. So um so that discomfort just arises. It's not something, sometimes, sometimes it comes because we have a thought, right? Where the mind has a thought, uh, it has a narrative about how it thinks things are going to be. And, and it's based on what has happened in the past. So it projects mm -hmm. it forward as a way to, to create a buffer so that we don't get hurt mm -hmm. again. Right. So you know, it could be like an example would be um, someone that grew up with a family member that was just really outspoken and um, uh, energetic. And um, that child believes that um, that that parent is being too much. Mm -hmm. Right. And they don't want to be like that. Yeah. And, uh, and so they change their behavior to, to not be like that. So, so then how that shows up in business or, um, in relationships is, um, that person doesn't speak up about what their needs are mm -hmm. because they don't want to come across as too much. They yeah. don't want to come across as a burden. Right. Um, and then, so that, you know, in terms of self-care, they don't make time for self-care, uh, mm -hmm. unless, unless it's very needed, mm -hmm. um, unless, That's, you know, it, they're broken down, forced yeah. to yeah. take a break. And even then it's hard for them mm -hmm. to, to just surrender to it. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and that's because it's just in their body. They're programmed, uh, to say, well, I, I can't do this. I can't even take a break because other people need me. Mm -hmm. Right. And this, this, this profile is, um, I have these five archetypes in, in my framework and this mm -hmm. archetype, this, this profile is kind of what I call the no needer. Okay. Um, the no needer is, is, is um, someone that's learned to uh, believe that it needs to be strong and have it all together. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's the one that is often the rock for other people, often taking care of their needs um, before their own. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and so yeah, this this person will just always take on the responsibility for everyone else, mm -hmm. and um, and not not try to. Um, it's it's learned to believe that its value, that someone's value is in taking care of other people. Yeah, it's based on what they can they can do for you. Like they think that they have to show some kind of value like you said in order yeah. to be loved or liked or yeah that's interesting so what are some of the, what are the other archetypes if you don't mind me asking yeah you, um, you go through them sure another one is the sacrificer um mm -hmm. the sacrificer is kind of what we started talking about it's the one that um has learned to believe that uh that person is too much or what mm -hmm. they want is too much okay. um and so they'll be loose with their boundaries they'll water down uh, what they really want, mm -hmm. um, or they'll water down what they put out in the world in terms of, you know, a business owner. Um, mm -hmm. um, I've, I've had clients who thought that their body of work was too much for people to handle or too much for people to get, like it was too out there. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what their belief was. And so they held back by not talking about it. Mm -hmm. um, and trying to find some other way to share it, but it was never that. Like yeah. I, for instance, I had one client that 
specifically this they they didn't want to talk about their body work they were pro- procrastinating on it for months mm-hmm. and they thought oh what i need is this like worksheet or this like um sort of th- thing that i can share it better and her husband created it for her and she's like oh this is exactly what i want and she still didn't talk about it mm-hmm. and then we led her through my process what i call the resistance release program mm-hmm. and um within a short period of time she was able to speak about her body of work with no resistance, with nice. with no procrastination. Like it just opened it up for her. That's really cool. Oh, so w- what is the release resistant program? Like, what do you go through? In yeah. That? Um, let me, before I do that, let me just cover the other three okay. uh, yes. archetypes. All right, so let's do it. Um, we also have the perfectionist. The perfectionist okay. believes that. Um, it needs to be right, but at the same time is spends a lot of energy trying not to be wrong. Okay. Um, so it's yeah. often tweaking things and uh, perfectionist doesn't have any problems starting over. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's perfectionist. Then we have the overgiver. Mm-hmm. The overgiver tends to believe that it can't receive anything unless it has given more. Yeah, I know um, a lot of people like that. Yeah. So like, even if it, if this person were going to be given a gift, if it, if that person didn't have something ready to give back, they were like, mm-hmm. no, 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 I can't receive this. This is too much. I can't, I can't take this. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they, they're constantly pushing away um, help or support because they don't feel like they can receive it yet. Yeah. They don't yeah. feel worthy almost. Right. Yeah. Right. And then the third, um, or the the, la- the last one, the fifth one is the prover or the mm-hmm. earner, uh, and this archetype um, believes that it has to constantly overcome, constantly create more, do more, prove more, um, in order to be seen as valuable, in order to receive what it wants, mm-hmm. um, and. Uh, you know, this is kind of the classic overachiever or, the, you know, type A sometimes. Yeah. Um, resting, relaxing is often spe- like a being lazy in their minds, mm-hmm. right? Difficult um, to do. Yeah, they're on to the next project uh, before they gave them credit for the, for the last one, mm-hmm. right? So those, so the, so the, those are the five archetypes. Um, I like that. And the reason that I wanted to go through all five is because then in the resistance release process or in the program, Mm -hmm. um, what we do is someone comes to me with a specific situation Mm -hmm. where they're noticing resistance coming up or procrastination, overthinking, and we, I help them identify which of the archetypes are most active in this situation. Mm -hmm. Um, Once we identify that, then we look at what are the behaviors or beliefs that this archetype um, be- well believes in, engages mm-hmm. in as a way of protection. Okay. Right. Like, I'm um, just pulling something out of my head. Like, maybe the archetype doesn't want um, you to look like a fool. Mm-hmm. Doesn't want to come across as an idiot. Mm-hmm. And. Um, intellectually you might just you might just um like push it off and say it's not a big deal but this is not about intellect this is not about rational this mm-hmm. is about the emotion inside our body that's that's kind of held in place as protection mm-hmm. right so yeah. once we get to know what the beliefs are the habits are then we we get to um be with what i call be with notice and be with um, the, the sensations where it exists in the body mm-hmm. and we, we get to be present with it without trying to change anything. Yeah. Right. So accepting it. Yeah. Accepting it, welcoming it, um, so that your body knows that it can feel safe even in the face of discomfort. Mm-hmm. Right. Because like, Going back to my story, I used to believe that in order for me to feel safe or for me to feel calm, I needed to block out all noise or discomfort. And But in this process of learning to be with, I got to see that, oh, I can feel discomfort 
and still be connected to myself and connected to other people. Mm -hmm. And um, what I think is going to happen, you know, what my mind is made up is going to happen based on what has happened before. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily the outcome. Yeah. 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 And when, when someone experiences that, then something changes in them mm -hmm. and they feel um, like in a sense, all that energy that's being used to protect is freed up mm -hmm. and they have now more energy. They feel lighter and then they can also more easily do the thing that they wanted to do. Yeah. Right now, um, after we do that, then we, we, I have people claim their greatness. Mm -hmm. um, and what this is, is that what I found is that not only do we protect against not wanting to come across as, as not enough or not, you know, not good or, you know, all these things, we also protect against being seen as all that. Mm -hmm. um like really really owning our power because we we cuz i mean you know we don't want to come across as egotistic or mm -hmm. that sort of thing and and that's that same thing of like we create a buffer like mm -hmm. what really is being egotistic we're so far from but yeah. in our mind in our experience it feels like oh my god this is like everyone's going to think I'm being in, you know, I'm being egotistical. I'm, mm -hmm. you know, pompous or whatever, but their experience is so not that. Yeah. Right. It's, yeah. So we need to be able to stand fully in, in who we are, mm -hmm. um, to, to, um, fully embody our power. Mm -hmm. And that brings a different energy yeah. into how we show up in everything we do and how other people perceive us. But, but what I find is that the thing that causes us to feel not fulfilled is not, not really that we don't have the relationships or that we don't have the money. In my experience, when we show up more fully as ourselves, when we stop suppressing and compromising who we are, Mm -hmm. then we actually feel more joy. Yeah. We feel more freedom. And that that um, invites us to create our lives differently, to allow mm -hmm. different things in our life. Yeah, you're in alignment, you know. Yeah. Um, some of the some of the ways I describe this is, you know, like you're you were born exactly as you and you, nobody else is like you. You're you're a unique person. There's so many unique there's so many unique things about you you couldn't even write it all down in a book right and when you don't show up as yourself you're not really doing your part uh, you know in this time on earth right you're not really you were meant to show up exactly the way you are and when you don't step into that you're not you're not aligned you know you're not you're not actually living into your purpose until you know you know if you really want to look at a uh, a very easy definition of purpose. It, it, it's basically just being yourself, you know, and accepting yeah. yourself and living your life and let it, letting it unfold in that, that acceptance and that happiness. Right. So I feel like I always tell people, yeah, you're not, you, you know, you're letting everybody else down because you're not showing up as you, you know, you, f you fit into this, this big puzzle of the world right now. And your piece is extremely important and you need to like, learn to show up exactly whatever feels good to you. That's how you should show up. And when you do that, the right people fall into your life. The right, the right, um, uh, hold on a second. I don't know what getting little interruptions on my screen. Sorry about that. Mm. You, when you're not, um, showing up as yourself, you know, when you, when you do show up as yourself, like the right, um, opportunities come come you you allow these things to flow into your life but when you're not showing up as yourself sometimes you're you're not in alignment with them they're there but you're not in alignment with them and so the more that you could really um show up as yourself and really love yourself and accept it and i really think that's a huge part what you said the release you know it's like you know just being able to sit with where you are at and be and and it's is is 
I guess I should ask you, is it a lot about acceptance of like where you are? And um, it's yes. Um, it's a lot of what you shared there that, that I want to touch upon, but first, yes. Okay. Um, it, it is, it is acceptance. It is like the sense of meeting ourselves with loving awareness, mm -hmm. um, embracing our humanity. Right. Um, so often I think culturally, societally, um, we meet ourselves with criticism. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I shouldn't be feeling this, um, what's wrong with me. I should be better than this. And, and all of those judgmental questions don't really lead to a good answer or a good future, mm -hmm. right. Or even a good present. Um, it leaves us feeling crappy and then, and then from that place of crappiness, we think, well, there's something I need to do differently to feel better. Mm -hmm. And that's not the case. That's not, it hasn't been my experience anyway. Mm -hmm. um, what I've noticed is, yeah, if we meet ourselves, including those parts of ourselves that are afraid, even including those parts of ourselves that are misinformed, mm -hmm. if we can meet all of ourselves from that place of loving awareness, acceptance, then something changes in us mm -hmm. and and we we do feel more free to do and have and be how we are mm -hmm. um going back to what you're saying before like i do agree that uh you know being ourselves or, or living our purpose is being ourselves like i i, I have come to that conclusion um mm -hmm. i will have to say though that sometimes and this is this was this was for me. I'm I'm sharing from my experience. Mm -hmm. Is that sometimes when I heard things like, "Well, you just have to live in alignment and be yourself," that my attempt to do that was completely from my head, mm -hmm. and I I was like, "Well, this is who I am, and this is um, this is how this is what alignment looks like." But it, it was fabricated. It, it yeah. wasn't completely true. What changed for me was really dropping into the body mm -hmm. and um, trusting in my body's wisdom more, um, you know, feeling, feeling everything that led to more alignment than anything, mm -hmm. you know, because, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I feel like when I was trying to come from it, like, Oh, well, you know, you're meant to be here and you know you're a gift to the world like all of that i believed in but i didn't know how to act on that mm -hmm. um because it was still in my head yeah um but again I once i dropped into the body and and learned to be present with it all uh then i learned to follow what felt alive i learned to follow what the next step was not what I thought the next step was, but really what what was presenting in front of me. And that's probably a big thing with my coaching now as well, is that um, it's not so much about following an agenda as it is um, inviting people to cultivate trust in themselves, mm -hmm. trust in the universe in terms of what's the what what is the universe? what is the universal wisdom being expressed right now? And yeah. let's follow that. Yeah. Being able to like feel that in your body. And I think, mm -hmm. I think you're right. Like you really need to um, get out of your head and step into your heart. You know, uh, it's, and I try to do this in my business all the time, whereas I used to always, well, what's everybody else doing? What do they say you're supposed mm -hmm. to do? You know, and I'm supposed to do this because this is what works, you know? And and as soon as I let go of that, and I was just like, I don't want to do that. So if I, if I start doing that, I'm not going to be happy. And the whole reason I'm in business for myself is so that I could be happy and I could have that freedom that we all want when we're in business for ourselves. And so um, this is something that I'm really stepping into recently. This is, this is fairly, fairly new for me in my business, at least, you know, is, is really seeing what it feels like in my heart. And then also just like taking a moment to like close my eyes and just like really think about, so if I do this, what is it going to look like, you know, in the future? And what is that going to feel like? Is that going to feel mm. good to me? Is, am I going to like doing that? Am I going to enjoy that? Because if I'm not, everybody else is going to feel that through me, whether people know that they're feeling it through me 
or whether it's just instinctual, they will feel it through me if I'm not enjoying it. And so yeah. I feel like learning how to pay attention and be aware of how things feel in your body um, is so important. And that's, we have all the guidance we need right inside of our bodies, but we are almost, um, so the way society works now is we're, we're putting this state, we're always put in the state of like doing, 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 busy, busy, busy. And, you know, moving on to the next thing, as you said, and that was me, I was definitely like the type A, I'm the, the prover, <laughs> you know? So it's like, um, you don't have time to check in. You're never checking in with yourself. You're right. never checking into your body. And that's, you know, that's where my journey started 10 plus years ago when I um, really started to like do this switch over. And it took me quite a while to like really um, learn everything that I've learned. But but yes, really feeling into the heart. That's, that's the answer. The, the answer yeah. is always, always there yeah. in your heart. And they say, the heart actually has its own nervous system and its own brain. I don't know, not an actual brain, obviously, but so I think that's very interesting when you look into the science of it. Yeah. Also. Yeah. Something you said there that I want to add to um, okay. in terms of like, you know, you said it's taken you 10 years and, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's taken you to get to this point. And, uh, you know, I, I want to say to to you and our listeners that, I mean, even for me as someone that's helping people gain freedom from self-sabotage, it's still a curse for me. Mm -hmm. You know, self-sabotage still, um, you know, I believe it exists in layers and we're always going to face new situations that are unfamiliar mm -hmm. and the body may still uh, react in protection. And the, the difference for me is that I'm better at not judging it. I'm better at not avoiding it. Um, mm -hmm. I'm better at meeting it with more compassion and more gentleness. And um, that's that's definitely been helpful because I, I don't I don't want people to think that it's like a one and done thing. And definitely and then, not <laughs> right because because it's yeah. not. Um, yeah. And then the other thing that I wanted to share that came up was because it it really spoke to me was like the the whole best practices thing. I don't know if you use that word. I don't think you did that that phrase, but it's like um like I was like this too where like I would look at other people uh, how mm -hmm. to run a business mm -hmm. and you know they were talking these are the best practices to do yeah. and this is what leads to success. Feels and so I, icky you, now, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> but, but like at those times when I used to follow it, I realized mm -hmm. what I wanted was a guarantee. Mm -hmm. And that if I had a guarantee, then I would feel safe. But mm -hmm. I never had a guarantee. It never worked because by the time I signed up for a program and one and thought that like this is the way, it mm -hmm. felt so icky to to do what they were suggesting. Yeah. That that, <laughs> yeah. you know, it just left me spinning in circles. Right. Yeah. So yeah, my path also has been um yeah, paying more attention to like how, how do I want to show up? Mm -hmm. uh, in, in business and how can I do this differently that honors me and the type of, uh, clients audience that I want to work with. Right. Yeah. Like, how, how can I be in, in more service to them rather than just create the sale? Yeah, exactly. It doesn't feel good thinking that way. And, um, and I feel like, no matter how much you push yourself to like, try to work that way, you're not going to, if, you know, if you're feeling that way, you're not in alignment with it. It's not going to work out. You're not going to complete, you know, just like you, the program or whatever it is, if it doesn't feel good to you. And I think um, honoring how it feels to you and then really looking at your business, you know, and, and saying like going through like your offers or, you know, how you work with people, you know, like, you know, anybody who becomes a coach, they have all these suggestions on how you should sell programs or packages or whatever. And it's like, like looking at all that stuff and just being like, what feels good and what, what hasn't worked in the past, even though most people are doing it, you know, like for example, you know, setting up coaching sometimes, um, with weekly calls sometimes is a little bit too much for people. Sometimes you need a little space to implement in between. So having a call every other week and then um, contact in between, maybe by email or text or whatever can be 
much more beneficial. You can get a lot more done because the, the person doesn't get overwhelmed because when a person goes into overwhelm, they just stop and they're not doing yeah. anything. And so yeah. like setting up the coaching program that's going to work for the individual you know, having options, not just like this cookie cutter thing that you have to have it this way or that way, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the things I always look at. Uh, so yeah, it's about, it's more about what's going to work for the person and how can I, yeah. how can I really be of service to them, you know, so that right. they benefit. And then I benefit also, because it's not all like, it's not always about the sale. It's also about what I feel like my purpose is. And I'm sure you feel the same way because it's like, I went through this and this was my experience and I want to share what worked for me with other people. And most coaches, like almost a hundred percent of the coaches that I've met so far and spoke with on the podcast have, that's why I always ask them to share their story because that's where this, this, uh, purpose that they have comes from it comes from their personal story and when when people share their stories especially coaches it's you know it makes people feel like they're not alone you know mm -hmm. because because as you said earlier going back to the it's not a one and done kind of a deal you know there's no coach out there that's doing everything perfect you know there, you know, there's no health coach out there that's drinking all their water every day and getting eight hours of sleep and meditating and doing their breath work and their cold plunge and, and, <laughs> you know, all of that stuff, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a, it's a work in progress. And I believe it's just a lifelong uh, process for all of us to, you know, um, and, and not everybody is, you know, moving and, you know, some people are very happy with where they're, where they are and that's okay. But, but like, for me, I just look at it as, um, I'm just like a lifelong learner and I'm, I have a insatiable curiosity about everything. And so mm -hmm. it's kind of, for me, I'll, I will never get to a point of like, I made it, you know, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking, it's more about what I learn along the way and the people I meet and the experiences I have and how much better can I feel about what I'm doing in the world, you know? So yeah, it's not, yeah. it's not definitely a one. It's definitely yeah. not a one and done. Yeah, exactly. It was definitely about the experience because I mean, yeah, like you said, we, we do never get there in the way that we think we get there. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the end we, we die. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> game over. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. um, but you know, th th there's something that I want to add to what you were saying earlier, because I, I think it's a really important distinction. Um, okay. you were talking about, well, we were talking about alignment and best practices and, you know, finding what's best for us in terms of our practice. Um, and, and then you were also talking about like, what doesn't feel good, like paying attention to that. And, and I just want to caution people because, um, I, I'm cautioning people to be really honest with themselves because sometimes what doesn't feel good doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad for us. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we can, and I'll speak for myself here because I've done this, I've seen it where I were like, well, this doesn't feel like it's in alignment. It doesn't feel good, mm -hmm. but it was just my way of avoiding. It was my yes. way of protection. That's a good point. And, and so I, you know, created a story that like, well, you know, it's supposed to feel good or it's supposed to feel in alignment, um, thinking that alignment always felt good. Mm -hmm. And, and then I would, um, shy away from doing things that could really serve me. Mm -hmm. um, the way that I started to see through that was I started to see patterns, right? Like, oh, mm -hmm. I did this and then I pulled away and then I did this and that didn't feel good and I pulled away and I'm still in the same spot. Mm -hmm. I've just tried a number of things. So it's not that none of them were in alignment. It, you know, it was that perhaps I wasn't, I, I was leaning into my self-sabotage. I was leaning mm -hmm. into protective mode. Yeah. And I needed to uh, be present with that first in order to find a better alignment for me. Yeah, that's a, that's a really, really good point because um, I've definitely, I've definitely done that too. So as soon as you feel the discomfort, you know, you take a step back and you're like, well, this is supposed to feel good, you know? But yeah, there is, I always, one of the things I always say is there's magic beyond your comfort zone, you know? So a lot of times when something really, really scares me, um, you know, 
I always say to myself, that's probably something I'm supposed to do. And mm-hmm. as an example, when I first uh, started the podcast, I just did solo episodes only. And I was terrified to have guests on because I was worried that I wasn't going to do something right. You know, I didn't mm-hmm. really know what I was doing tech wise. And so, but I knew, I knew that this was something I needed to do. It, it was very uncomfortable for me. And so I went through the steps to make myself a little more comfortable. You know, I, I had a friend on, my first guest was a friend. I worked through the tech. I made my kids hop on a Zoom call with me and I worked through all the tech, you know, beforehand mm-hmm. because I wanted to be professional. And, and so, yeah, that, that is a, an excellent point. You know, you need to ask yourself the questions, but there, for me, the way I resolve that is, um, and this is this not going to work for everybody. I, I'm aware of that, but it's a feeling in my body, really. So when I lean into something, there's excitement, um, scary excitement, and then there's scary that's bad, hmm. you know? And so for me, scary excitement feels like opening and, you know, and scary bad feels like, no, that's bad. Like mm-hmm. bad vibes, like I'm not going to stay away from that. Usually when I get bad vibes, it's from like a person or something like that. And I don't quite know what it is, but, um, it's usually something to do with that. Um, but good vibes always feels expansive to me. And, um, so you could check in with your body too. I like the way you put it though. It's a, it's a, it's another way, you know, I think everybody's different and everybody needs to figure it out on their own, whether they're self-sabotaging or not. Um, sometimes it could be really, really hard if you've been doing that for a long time. I know I did, did it for a long time. I still do it. I still do it. Mm -hmm. You know, whenever I get like, um, a lot of times I self-sabotage when I have to like put myself out there, I'm maybe presenting something new, a new offer, a new program, and I'm nervous about it, you know, so I'll, I'll do all the preparation work, you know, I do everything perfect, all the preparation work. And then when it comes time to promote it, you know, I'll say things like, oh, I don't want to send too many emails because I don't want to bother the people on my email list or, oh, I don't want to talk about it too much because everyone's going to get sick of me talking about it, you know, but that's what you have to do sometimes when you're selling something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it might, um, I could easily self-sabotage by saying, well, it just doesn't feel good. So I'm not going to do it, you Mm -hmm. know? Um, But it doesn't feel good because I'm putting myself out there. And like you said earlier, it, it's like, you're always worried about not being accepted or not being loved mm-hmm. and kind of uh, I've, I've grown past that quite a bit now. Cause like when I, when I, something doesn't go well, I'm like, Hmm, what can I learn from that? How, like, I must've presented it wrong. I didn't present the right value or whatever. Like, so I have to look into that because I really do think this is a good thing, you know? So I don't make it about myself, you know, but um. I agree with you. That was a really good point to make because you could very easily stay in your little safety shell um, by saying nothing feels good. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah. And and I did. I did. You know, so that's why I think it was important to to share because, um, you know, we've learned that all discomfort is bad. Mm -hmm. And um, but then, you know, it's not. It's not actually some discomfort is not, re- I don't want to say it, it's not real discomfort, but it's, it's based on um, conditioning or a narrative that's mm-hmm. no longer serving us. And, yeah. and, you know, if we can acknowledge that and move through it, mm-hmm. uh, then it opens up a new world for us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can't think of a better way to explain that without sound, you know, sounding like, well, discomfort is bad, but it's like when I, I always relate to things when it comes to like business, you know, because it's like a lot of the things I do in my business, while it may feel aligned, it, it's not always, doesn't always feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. It almost always is uncomfortable because you're expanding. And just like when you expand anything, just like when you're, you're growing a muscle or expanding anything, there's always some soreness or discomfort. Right. And so in order to keep growing, we have to have some discomfort, you know, so there's, there's magic outside of the comfort zone for sure. And our brains are meant to keep us safe, but then doesn't, they're not necessarily meant to keep us in a place of thriving, just safe and alive, you know? So yeah, it's our job to kind of step out of that every once in a while and grow. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
So this has been a great conversation. I, I, I love it. Um, how can people connect with you? Where can people find you? Yeah. Um, so I, I, I just created this, um, this audio program. It's, mm -hmm. it's free. Um, people can go to inquisitivejourneys.com, which is my website slash okay. be with uh, so I, I'll send you the link later. I'm assuming okay. you might put it in show notes and stuff, yeah, that sort of I'll thing. So inquisitivejourneys.com slash be with. It's just this short mindfulness practice to help people um, start to be in, start to be more present with what they're feeling, what they're noticing. It's it's the it's what we talked about before of meeting mm -hmm. ourselves from that place of compassion and curiosity, mm -hmm. right? Um, and that's the cornerstone, one of the co cornerstones of my resistance release program. Okay. That's beautiful. Um, Thank you for yeah. sharing that. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's been great talking to you. I want to thank you for coming on and sharing your experience and your knowledge with us. It was, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you so much, Tina. This has really been a joy uh, to, to connect with you, to have this conversation um, and, uh, yeah, I wish you much, much success. Thank you. You too. Thank you.